Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. July 14th, 2023. Let's get into it. All right, the first thing was uh, I got a comment or a couple of comments and people were wondering, they say, you know, we don't see you out hiking no more, that cybersecurity guy. When are you gonna get out there and, and make a hiking video? Well, I do have a lot of footage of some hikes. Now, those are not political videos. Those are just me showing you hiking here in the wonderful free, free, free state of Florida. And uh, we'll get back to that. I just got to make those into videos. Those take a lot of time because it's lots of little individual clips, you know, and you got to splice them all together and uh, and edit each one. And so it's, uh, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I only have so much time. And then the, the second comment that I got on the uh, channel was, uh, you know, you talk about the Ukraine war, Ukraine war, Ukraine war, Ukraine war. Why don't you talk about something else every now and then? So... I took that advice, I didn't talk about it yesterday, and I went into uh, the media and how corrupt the uh, Western media is on my video yesterday. Of course, I am gonna always cut back to the Ukraine war, but I'll try to put something up front on these videos for you. So if you don't wanna watch any more about the Ukraine, 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 you can just watch the first part of the video and then cut it off. Uh, but if you wanna see what's going on, you know, lots of people are dying. The neocons have had their way, and uh, we'll get into that in just a minute. We're not going to. So the first part of the video is I wanted to talk about the Brinks, and uh, I don't think most Americans, because of our Western idiot media, even knows what's uh, going to happen. All right. So right now, back in January, Russia put together a, a trial digital-based uh, blockchain currency. And they based it on gold, okay? And I uh, and it's and they've been experimenting with it between them and China for the most part. And so now China and Russia are trading back and forth. You know, it's a, it's a whole new system. This will bypass the Western SWIFT system, uh, getting around all the sanctions, which uh, you know they've been preparing to do for quite some time. You want to weaponize your currency? Well, guess what, people. Where there's a will, there's a way. There's a will, there's a way. Eventually, it'll all come crashing down. So, now, it's uh, it, about 80% of the trade, from what I understand, and imagine it soon be 100%, is being chain traded in this, uh, uh, this digital-based blockchain currency. So, we got the Brinks coming up. And you, a lot of people go, well, what, what is the Brinks? Well, that's uh, Brazil. South Africa, China, Russia, God dang it, and uh, India. There you go. So that's uh, that's a major portion of the world's population. And so what's going to come out in this? Uh, I think it's in August. The conference is going to take place. I would imagine that the conference is mainly going to be about trading in this new uh, blockchain gold-backed currency out of Russia and China, because uh, they're the ones who really put it all together. And so if India, South Africa, and uh, um, whatever the other Brinks nation was, uh, anyway, if they adopt this uh, blockchain for a lot of their trade, so that bypasses the SWIFT system even more. But what's even scarier, <laughs> this, is, this is the mind blowing part. 44 other nations are gonna be there. How many of those nations are gonna adopt the Brinks for, for trade and whatnot? You know, Saudi Arabia, for example. I mean, that would be huge. I mean, they've already bypassed the dollar for the most part because they're trading in one with China. For, but uh, so that's a, now is it going to happen overnight? No. I'll tell you what, let's let's watch a video here real quick, and uh, th this will explain the Brinks currency better than I can. And another mind milestone to answer your question, uh, Shane, was uncovered when Russia surprised the market at, open of, uh, at the open of the year, uh, when Sparebank, in collaboration with the Russian Central Bank, announced they'd digitized the first tranche of Russian Central Bank physical gold and placed it on the, on the blockchain, the trustless blockchain. So, and as we noted in our first 2023 X episode, this was the thin end of a, of, a, of a financial wedge telegraphing that a physically backed 
gold benchmark, non-dollar currency, was being trialed to price commodities valued in gold grams. Now, while completely ignored by the mainstream media, um, what this action reaffirmed was that the Russia had stealthily began to implement Sergei Glaznev golden ruble three currency ultimately is going to be the death knell for the US dollar and its globalist objectives. So we need to put this in, into perspective. By sanctioning the digitization of central bank physical gold placed on the trustless blockchain, Russia began the process of cutting out the fiat middleman, opening up physical gold to serve as a medium of exchange, a unit of account, a store of value. Hey, what does that sound like? It sounds like a currency to me. And obviously, they're using that to benchmark this new trade settlement currency. Now, six months in and having built the infrastructure and consolidated its interconnected gold alliance with China, over 80% of Russia's trade is now conducted in rubles and yuan. And following the recent SEO summit in India, the next move, the next more formalized leg to open up gold and the yuan gold back commodity settlement trade is upcoming next month at the August 22nd to 24th BRICS summit in South Africa. Now, the BRICS summit will pave the way for a BRICS SEO trade settlement currency tied to gold. And while the currency basket will comprise of a lot of components, physical gold is the linchpin of the country bond, uh, the currency bond market. The BRICS group is set to introduce a new currency backed by gold in contrast to the credit-backed US dollar with countries lining up to join the growing initiative. The BRICS countries are planning to introduce a new trading currency which will be backed by gold. More and more countries recently expressed desire to join BRICS. The decision comes a month ahead of scheduled alliance summit in Johannesburg, South Africa. 41 countries have since shown their interest in BRICS membership and its new currency implementation. Russia's foreign ministry has stated that if African states show enthusiasm, the group's expansion may also be on a Russia-Africa summit's agenda in the end of July. As of now, the BRICS group remains comprised of Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. Former statistician general of South Africa, Pali Lehola, says the gold bank currency will facilitate the advancement of developing countries. Avoiding using the gold standard, uh, we have gone for almost uh, 40, 45 years now since 1980 when this was dropped. Uh, and we have seen the consequences particularly of this uh, to the developing countries uh, when the dollar was uh, adopted as a, as a standard and gold not as such. Yet against that, uh, there's been accumulation of gold. Uh, in the developing world. South Africa had a much stronger currency when the gold standard was still in force. By going the, the gold standard by many countries uh, that many African countries, of course, have, this will be of great benefit uh, to strengthening uh, their, 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 the currency, uh, the single currency that is backed by gold. Uh, it will facilitate uh, development uh, because after all, currency is um, the quantity of material things uh, that societies have. If you use another currency based on material wealth or material things you don't have, it means that uh, you are at the mercy of that of that country, and it's uh, and they will charge commissions and the like. This unwind of paper market leverage has far-reaching effects. All right, so hopefully that explained things. And so that's what I wanted to, to hit on in the first part of this video. So while I'm on the, uh, the Brinks topic, you always say, well, what does this mean for me? What can I do, that cybersecurity guy? What can I do? Well, you kind of lost out. And I've always, you know, in my videos, I've been trying to tell you, silver, gold, platinum, they were way down. Uh, good Lord, silver was in the... Between $22 and $23, I don't think you're ever going to see that again, but we, who knows. And uh, it was a great buying opportunity, and I certainly bought up some. I just don't have that kind of money. You know, you've got money. Currency is not money. It's fiat. But uh, I just don't have that kind of fiat laying around to convert it into a hard asset. Uh, so anyway, you kind of missed that. It's still 
Well, it's between 24 and 25 silver right now. Uh, where do I think that's going? Well, once the Brinks is over, and uh, eventually, because they're, they're pegging their, their currencies to gold, uh, gold's going to revalue. And when gold revalues, probably between, I'd say, 2,500 to 3,000 at first, and then you're going to see the gap. Right now, it's about, I want to say it's about 88 to 1 gap between gold and silver. Historically, that is between between 30 to 1 and 15 to 1. So what that means is for every ounce of silver, it, it, it takes 15 ounces of silver to buy one gold coin. Right now, it takes 88 ounces of silver to buy one gold coin. So I hope that breaks it down for you. So what am I expecting? If Well, if silver revalues to its historic value, about 30, 30 let's just say 30 to 1, Okay, that's going to put silver between $150 to $200 an ounce. Now, you're still buying it right now at $24 to $25 an ounce. So, is that going to happen by the end of the year? I think so. I think we're going to see that. I don't think they can keep a lid on this thing for very long. So, that was the, the main theme of the first part of the video here, was I wanted to talk about that. And then, of course, getting to also what else, what else you can do. And I've talked about this as hard assets. Real estate's not a good buy right now. I would agree with that. But uh, you should, could start looking at, uh, well, just stocking up on everything. You know, hard assets come in many forms. Uh, toilet paper, you know, uh, look around the house. Do you have enough alcohol? Do you have enough Band-Aids? Uh, are your prescription drugs all uh, where you need them to be? Uh, you know, make sure you got, I'd say a three to six month supply of food. You know, that's a hard asset. Uh, then if there's any any things, because because your dollar, your buying power, you got to understand what currency is. It's just a means of exchange to, to get you the things that you need in life. Well, as that dollar devalues, and it's devaluing rapidly now, and it's going to become much more rapid, that dollar buys you less and less and less. So if you got it sitting in a bank account earning, let's say 2%, you're losing money every day. So if you can convert that into something meaningful in your life, like let's take my example, all right? I went ahead and put in new windows. Uh, it cost me, I know you're going to say, holy moly, that cybersecurity guy, $50,000 is what I spent on these new windows. But you see, that's a hard asset, okay? And what's the value of doing that? Well, I put in coastal, those, those are coastal windows. So now here in Florida, if we do get a hurricane, my house should do pretty good, unless a tree falls on it. I do have trees around. I mean, you can't plan for everything. But uh, but anything impacting into my windows shouldn't have any problem. The other thing is that those coastal windows, their video is going to be a bit choppy. Because <laughs> it's hotter than shit out here. And uh, if it keeps overheating on me, I don't even know where I was in the previous conversation. But uh, I was talking about assets, and I put 50,000 windows in. But see, that's going to save me in the long run on energy costs. And uh, also, to make my house nice and quiet. Got a big motorcycle gang that lives over the fence behind my house. I don't even hear them start up in the morning no more. So anyway, there's that. And I'm putting in blinds. Paid way, way, way too much for them. But I don't know about you. I went ahead and went with the automatic ones. That's why they cost so damn much. And uh, because my blinds are behind the furniture. And for me to get back there to open and close the blinds is... Well, I mean, you know, I, I'd like to block off some, you know, put stuff in front of the window, still be able to see out the windows. Anyway, so uh, let's get on to the next topic. And uh, like I said, the, I'm trying to get, obey to not talk about just Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. Let's get to North Korea. First clip here. Let's watch some military exercises that uh, NATO is conducting or maybe just the United States. Let's check those planes out.
close to North Korean uh, airspace. I think they're trying to provoke them just a little bit. What do you think? I don't know, but uh, so maybe, you know, they're going to try to get North Korea into a war. So let's see, we're going to fight Russia, we're going to fight China, and now we're going to fight North Korea. I don't see it, how we're going to do all that, but uh, I guess the warmongering Democrats, the warmongering Democrats, they think that we're going to just fight the whole damn world. Hey, let's watch the latest ICBM launch from Korea. You know, I mean, I always, it's all, you know, you always look, you look at it, but you don't really think about how in the world did they get all that footage of that missile taken off, you know? So that was pretty cool. So now let's get into my favorite topic, of course, the Ukraine war. Not my favorite. I don't like watching people die. War among the Democrats, they like watching people die. They like child trafficking too. They're all out against that Sound of Freedom movie. I tell you what, I can't believe anybody be for child sex trafficking, but Democrats, or among our Democrats, that's what they love. They love that type of stuff. I think they're uh, kind of evil, don't you think? So speaking of evil, let's talk about evil. I don't know if you've seen them pictures of uh, uh, Zelensky at the uh, NATO conference. His usefulness has come, just about come to an end. Uh, as you know, he was just an actor put in charge of Ukraine back in 2014. Things the media won't tell you. And uh, with, the, with NATO in the United States, once your usefulness comes to an end, you don't usually survive much longer. <laughs> so, so uh, and plus, I don't see the Ukraine war. I don't even know how they're holding out. But, 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 all you Ukraine fans, I did see some footage. Uh, Ukraine, they are uh, blowing up Russia, Russian hardware. Uh, there was about three clips. I didn't get them on the video because I just watched them on another channel. And, uh, but yeah, they, they're still getting, and they were pretty far behind Russian lines. So uh, that tells me they still got some artillery, still got some things. Now Russia did hit another ammo dump, uh, but let's watch some of the Russian hardware in action. <laughs> Well, that, 
impressive. Let's watch another artillery piece in action. Готов? So that's what you're up against in Russia. And uh, I just, you know, I like to show these clips of, of their hardware because everybody thinks that you, you're beating on a, a baby seal, you know, with, with no uh, military uh, prowess or whatever. No, people. And uh, by the way, the offensive, it looks like another city is going to fall in northern uh, Ukraine. And I, I can't remember the name of it. I put a tweet out about that. So that, that should happen soon. But I did want to talk about how yet NATO uses everybody. Think about uh, Vietnam. We used South Vietnam to beat up on the North Vietnamese. We ended up losing the war. Lot, millions, millions of people died. That's evil, man. That's evil. And then what do we do? We just pulled out. Then we went into Afghanistan for what, 20, 20 years or so? Beat up on a bunch of towel heads over there. Uh, killed, a, killed a whole bunch of them. And then what did we do? We left them $85 billion in military equipment, or the war bombing Democrats did. So that was, uh, that, did, that war didn't work out too well. Let's see, Syria. Don't think we're winning in Syria, do you? I mean, I, from what I understand, the Russians are down there backing the Syrian government, and that's why Turkey got pissed off and uh, went ahead and endorsed uh, Sweden. That was one of the reasons that I endorsed Sweden coming into NATO. So we got that going on. So now what do we do? Well, somehow, and I'll never figure this out. They got the Ukrainians to fight a proxy war with Russia. And see the beauty. So I wanted to get this on the video. I got a couple of them buzzing me right now. This is a bee farm out here in the middle of nowhere. Look at all the bees swarming around. Boy, I tell you, one of those got in the wall of my house. It was a disaster. I got to, I put the back of the phone on because uh, it keeps overheating on me. I just keep trying to make video. But I wanted to show you the bees. Isn't that cool? Ooh, let me get out of here. <laughs> I don't know if they would swarm over and attack you. I guess it's possible. But uh, I figure as long as I don't bother them, they won't bother me. So we'll get on with the, the video here. So I was talking about how we used Ukraine against, uh, against Russia. Now, the original thought was, of course, that the sanctions would, uh, would hurt Russia. That turned out not to be the case. In fact, it freed them up. And then, of course, uh, we were created. I don't know if you've seen any of the war footage that I put out, uh, how many of my videos you've watched, it blows my mind. I had no idea how much hardware we had pumped into Ukraine. I mean, that's a, that's two militaries. Well, I guess we've been arming Ukraine since 2014, but I had no idea that we had built them up to be the, probably the, I, I would imagine they were the second largest military force on the planet by the time NATO was done arming and equipping them. Uh, it's second only to Russia, but even well at that time they were number one back when the war began uh, I don't even think Russia knew how well armed uh, Ukraine was although. I'm sure their intelligence is very very good uh, But uh, man, I've never seen uh, Colossal battles that are taking place. I mean this is this is World War II uh, on steroids I mean I and you know what we did if Ukraine have always said this a couple of times if Ukraine had been smart, they would have taken all that hardware, uh, maybe made a pact with Russia and marched south, and they could have easily taken all of Europe. 
Well, I'm in the shade, falling overheated again. <laughs> One good thing about breaking your neck, man, is uh, I don't feel the heat because uh, I have no feeling in my feet and hands, so heat doesn't bother me too much these days. Anyway, getting back to uh, a couple other things, uh, I I was just I was listening to the radio while I'm not making video. They said the average person has seventeen thousand dollars in credit card debt. People, people, if you can't live within your means, you're gonna have to make a sacrifice. Go out, buy a buy a trailer man go live in a trailer park i mean you're just gonna have to do something to reduce your expenses i understand we're getting on hard 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 times and i may be doing the same thing you know my my funds are dwindling on down uh but then again i've got some hard assets that if they do go up uh, that should offset things and hopefully keep me in my house but anyway i'm just trying to throw that out there because that that number just blew my mind i mean talk about this video going all over the damn place the other thing was uh, getting back to the media lies to your theme. I was listening to the radio yesterday morning, the Brian Kill Me show. I, I don't really, I, he's, he's all right. You know, it's just something, Nick, I don't know about you. I just cut the radio on when I'm in the shower and listen to whatever's there. Anyway, he goes on and this guy comes on. He says, yes, the Ukraine army has destroyed half of the Russian military forces that existed in the world before the war. This guy's out of his fucking mind. Excuse my French. He's out of his freaking mind. Holy moly, I was like, is this what the American people believe? This is the crap that the media feeds to people? I mean, if you're watching my videos, you're somewhat more educated. But I mean, I mean, that, you know, talk about, I mean, there are lies and there are lies. <laughs> that, that was the biggest lie I've ever heard in my lifetime. I was like, do people really believe this garbage? Oh my God, no wonder the poor American people have just been psyoped to the max. They don't know what to believe no more. Ah, the war will soon be over by the end of the year for sure. And then what? The, what's the media going to do? I guess, how are they going to spin that? Of course, Zelensky will get tossed out in the garbage. I will see that. So that's it for this video. You can run for a long time. Run for a long time. Run for a long time. Sooner or later, God will cut you down. Sooner or later, God will cut you down. Don't listen to that backbiting politician. Or that Democrat rambler. Or that rhino rambler. There you go. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.